Hey guys, this is Austin, and this is the ROG phone. So when ASUS invited us out to their event here at Computex, I had a few big questions. So after seeing the Razer phone last year, there's some interesting stuff, there's some stuff that it does well, but at the end of the day, it has a great display, it has an interesting build, but it's not a great phone. Now I don't want to be too hard on the Razer phone, as there are some things it does well, but at the end of the day, I don't care how gaming focused of a device you're making, it has to be a good phone, and the ROG phone, at least on paper and sort of based on first impressions, looks like it is that good balance. So what is the ROG phone? What you're getting here is on the surface a very unique looking device. And when I say that, I mean it. Not only do you have an LED that is going to be full RGB on the back, but you've got a vent, you've got vapor chamber cooling, and you've got what looks to be one of the best looking displays I've ever seen on a smartphone. The ROG phone is rocking a six inch 2160 by 1080 p AMOLED display. Now that might not sound impressive, but what you're getting here is two things. First of all, it's a solid panel, it's got good viewing angles, really impressive brightness, it's going to support HDR, but almost more importantly than that, it's going to be running at a full 90 hertz. Now yes, on paper, the Razer phone has it beat, but not only are you getting a much, much nicer looking OLED panel, but as far as I'm concerned, running at 90 frames per second versus 120 frames per second is very hard to tell on any display, especially when it comes to a phone. So what you're getting here is actually a decent... I'm gonna just stop pressing things accidentally. Now, if you take a look at the back of the phone, you'll definitely see it's got some gamer style, but I actually don't think it's that bad. It's going to be fairly subtle, especially when you're considering that this is going to be glass, sort of blends in a little bit. And while you do have a glowing LED logo, it's going to be completely customizable, and importantly, you can also turn it off if you don't want to, you know, be sitting in a meeting looking like this. The rest of the specs are literally as high-end as you can imagine. So this guy is rocking the Snapdragon 845, but not just any Snapdragon 845. It's actually a custom version which is running at just under three gigahertz. They don't have the exact SKUs just yet, but you should expect eight gigs of RAM and up to supposedly 512 gigabytes of storage. Camera-wise, you're getting a setup that is very similar to the Zenfone 5 and 5Z, a wide-angle 8-megapixel camera as well as a 12-megapixel standard shooter. Now, the main difference here is that these are going to be supported by Google's AR Core, which should be helpful for some AR games in the future, but expect decent performance, maybe not anything spectacular, but definitely better than the Razer phone. Am I being too mean to the Razer phone? All this is being backed up by a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, a pretty decent size, especially considering that you have to have so much power to run a phone like this. Now there's some other things that are definitely appreciated. First of all, we do have USB-C as well as a headphone jack and two more USB-C ports, which I'll talk about in a second. But you're also going to be getting some really impressive sounding front firing speakers. Hey guys, this is Austin. And today it's time to finally build what you guys have been asking for for months. Those are incredibly loud speakers. Something cool that's shared with the Pixel 2 is that you can actually squeeze on the edges of the phone to be able to enable gaming mode. So on the Pixel, that'll turn on Google Assistant, but here, you can see it turns all red and looks cool. And this will turn off things like notifications when you're in the game, enable a higher level of performance, and just look really cool. Now if you take a look at the top of the phone, what you're going to find are there are two little sort of ridged edges here. Now this actually can be mapped inside the software to be an actual button. So as opposed to needing to carry around a controller, for some games you might just be able to use these as triggers because it's all going to be pressure sensitive. It's actually kind of cool. And one of my favorite parts, even though it's not really all that important, is if I actually open up the camera here, you can see that if I just press on top, it takes a shot. It's just cool, right? It feels like a real camera. You don't have to think about it. Like, I think I naturally sort of press down on this part of the phone when I'm taking a shot, but it actually works as a shutter button here. What really pushes the ROG phone into crazy talent are going to be the accessories. So in addition to your standard USB-C port and headphone jack that you're going to find on the bottom of the phone, the side of the phone also has two more USB-C ports. The first accessory is the AeroActive Cooler. Now this moves your USB-C port as well as your headphone jack to the side of the phone. So when you're playing in landscape, it doesn't sort of get in your way when you're trying to hold it on either end. But on top of that, it has RGB, because of course it does. It's a phone in 2018 that has the ROG brand on it. And on top of that, it's also going to function as an actual cooler for your phone. And importantly, this is included in the box, unlike some of the other slightly more exciting accessories. But I will actually say one thing, because the fan is going to be cooling the entire back of the phone because of the vapor chamber, which runs mo most of the way here, you're actually getting a little bit of cool air on your fingers when you're holding it like this, which is nice. If you play any kind of smartphone game for an extended period of time, you know that it can get very hot very quickly. There's also the mobile desktop dock. 
So this is actually a pretty hardcore accessory, which when you dock your phone inside of it, will give you a wide range of ports, including Ethernet, HDMI, DisplayPort, a ton of USB ports. And importantly, it's also going to allow you to use a mouse and keyboard in the game. Now this paired with some clever software will allow you to use a mouse and keyboard on literally any Android game out there. The way it works is, is that it will remap various different parts of your display to go along with your keyboard or mouse. So for example, if you hit the E key on your keyboard, it can press a specific part of the display that might you know, reload or pick something up. Now to be fair, the very early ROG phone that I got to try was not super smooth as far as this went, so we'll kind of have to wait and see, but I feel like it's a very simple piece of tech that I'm sure they'll be able to sort out by the time the phone comes out. The real issue is going to be, I think this is kind of cheating because most people are playing on their actual phones and someone else could just drop their phone on the dock and play with a full mouse and keyboard. So we'll see about that, but super clever and I think it actually could be implemented pretty well. Something just as crazy is the Twendu dock. Now this sort of turns your ROG phone into something that kind of looks like a Nintendo DS. So essentially when you drop your phone in, it's going to give you a secondary display which you can use for a lot of different purposes. For example, if you want to say stream from your phone, you could have the actual chat and the Twitch window up on one screen and your actual game on the other. But there's a lot of really cool advantages that you could have with this, especially considering that it does have not only a full-size SD card slot and USB-C out, but it even does have a full 6,000 milliamp hour battery. There is a lot to like with the ROG phone. Now the idea of having a phone that's dedicated to gaming at first was very skeptical to me, right? So yes, it's going to be a nice function to be able to have something that can do well at gaming, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's a phone and it has to be able to function well as a phone. So based on what I've seen with the ROG phone, it does perform well, but importantly, it still doesn't really give up a lot of functionality or features, right? You can still fit it in your pocket. It's not going to be giant. It's not going to be bulky. It has a nice display, good performance, all the things that you would expect. Now the main issue, and I think the main thing that really sort of worries me with the ROG phone is going to be price. This is not going to be cheap, especially considering that it does come with the actual fan attachment inside the box. So of course, it's too early to know about the actual specific pricing or any kind of availability, although it should be out later this year. But the thing that really worries me is that this is going to be a $1,000 plus phone. Now I get it, if it's going to be in the $800 to $1,000 range, I think it's actually going to be justified, right? I mean, you compare it to something like a Galaxy Note 8 or something, it's not going to be far off. But if it's going to be $1,000, $1,100, $1, that's going to be a lot of money for essentially as ROG's first phone. So I'm very curious, what do you guys think about the ROG phone? Let me know in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next one.